Alright gamers, this time around I'm going to be taking a look at a batch of underrated PlayStation 1 games. The original PlayStation was released back in 1995 as Sony looked to take over the gaming world. The library of games available on Sony's debut console is vast, varied and full of top tier titles. It spawned some franchises that are still going strong today, the likes of Tekken, Grand Theft Auto and one of my all time favourite series, Tomb Raider. It is also home to many, many poor shovelware grade games that are not worth anyone's time. Games that were developed and produced just to trick parents and grandparents alike into buying games for little Timmy because they were based on a TV show he watched or a toy line he enjoyed. Luckily enough though, the PlayStation also has a ton of games that didn't receive the love and respect that they deserved. These are the games I'm going to be taking a look at today. So let's dive into the wonderful world of underrated PlayStation 1 games as we kick off with... Hogs of War is a turn-based tactic game along the same lines as Worms, but in a third-person perspective. In the game you take control of a team of five pigs whose main aim is to take out all the pigs on the opposing team. You control one pig at a time in a turn-based manner. Each turn allows you to move your hog around the map, traversing over different terrains aiming to get to within range of your enemies, taking aim at said enemies and blowing them away with a vast array of different weapons and abilities. Each squad member will be assigned a different class type which gives them access to certain different weapons and abilities. There are four main class types that your hogs can assume the role of. The class types are Heavy Gunner, Engineer, Stealth, Espionage and Medics. Each class uses different weapons such as the stealth class using sniper rifles and the engineer being able to use explosives such as grenades, landmines and TNT. As well as the class specific weapons, you're also able to use vehicles such as tanks as well as artillery turrets and pillboxes. The game can be played in multiplayer which is probably where it's at its most fun, but there is also a campaign mode where you choose a nation, build a squad of up to 8 characters and set out to conquer the whole world. Conquering the whole world with 8 people is pretty damn impressive, these pigs are badass. In campaign mode the main objective is to conquer all 5 regions of the world map. Each region consists of 5 missions against your opposing nation. As you progress through the campaign mode the characters in your squad can gain promotions and medals for completing certain objectives during each mission. Unfortunately the campaign mode also features semi permadeath, meaning each hog can be revived once dead but only twice. After the third death your squad member is lost for good, so either play well or don't get too attached to your squad members. While the game did receive the odd positive review like a 9 out of 10 from Eurogamer, most of the reviews were around the 5 to 7 out of 10 mark and I honestly feel that this game deserves higher scores as it's one hell of a fun time and plays very well. It has stellar music which fits into the aesthetics of the game and the time that it is set. If for some reason you've never played Hogs of War, I would recommend you change that as soon as you can because I almost guarantee that you will have a blast with it and it may become one of your favourite games on the system. Next up is Driver 2. I'm a huge fan of the two driver games on the PlayStation so I was very shocked when doing research for this episode to find out that Driver 2 didn't review very well upon release and isn't seen as the excellent game that I see it as. I'm not going to spend much time on Driver 2 as I'm actually working on a video about the Driver series and I don't want to repeat myself too much but what I will say is that Driver 2 in my opinion improved on everything that the first Driver game did and is one hell of a blast to play. Upon release certain gaming critics did review the game favourably. Game Informer gave it an 8.75 out of 10 which I think is fitting but other sites and magazines did not seem to like it as much as me and Game Informer. IGN gave it 5 out of 10 as did Edge. Giving such a great game as Driver 2 such a low pitiful score is shameful and honestly I expect better from Edge. Not so much IGN though. If you've ever been put off playing Driver 2 because of these poor reviews or because you've seen it sitting at a quite frankly ridiculous 62 out of 100 on Metacritic, I would honestly tell you to ignore these poor scores and absolutely give it a go. It's a cheap title on the system at the moment and it's absolutely worth it. Next up is one of my all time favourite PlayStation games and that is Future Cop LAPD. Now, Future Cop LAPD is not a game you want to let pass you by. It was brought to us by EA, yes I know EA are the worst but back in the day they actually released some stellar original titles. 
Released in September 1998 in the US and Europe, Future Cop LAPD is a kind of third person shooter before third person shooters had really taken off and become the juggernauts they are today. You assume the role of the pilot of the X-1 Alpha, a robot designed to fight in the crime war in Los Angeles in the year 2098. Pretty sure I won't be around to witness a crime war as that would make me a 72 and I'd be surprised if I make it halfway to that. Future Cop LAPD was initially been developed as the next entry in the Strike series and was initially labelled Future Strike, but for whatever reason it evolved into what it became and was never tied to the Strike series at all. In Future Cop LAPD there are two game modes available to you, Crime War and Precinct Assault. One thing that I truly love about this game is both modes can be played either in single or multiplayer. I'm a huge fan of Couch Co-op and this is one of the finest titles on the PS1 that offers Couch Co-op. Not only does it offer co-op though, it also offers some intense competitive multiplayer but honestly, I never put much time into this mode and therefore don't really have a lot to say about it. It just goes to show how good the co-op mode is. Crime War is Future Cop LAPD's story mode and offers a variety of missions and locations spreading across Los Angeles. During the couch co-op aspect of this game mode, both players' health bars are intertwined which means if one player dies, both players fail. This can be annoying and frustrating at times if one of the players' skill level is much higher than the other, but it also promotes the need to work together and not go in gung-ho. This is the mode I played the most with my best friend when it came out. Precinct mode was way ahead of its time and is cited as an early MOBA game, inspiring such games as Dota and League of Legends, two games I've never played. It is essentially an arena battle mode where each player starts with a single base and has to work towards wiping out their opponent. You do this by capturing automated turrets or outposts as well as purchasing and deploying hover tanks to invade your opponent's base. Like I said, I haven't put much time into this mode, but if you do get around to trying this game then I would say definitely put more time into it than I did because I feel like I might have missed out on a fantastic time by passing on it. Future Cop LAPD did receive somewhat favourable reviews when it was released, but for me it deserves so much more. According to Game Rankings, this game currently sits on a tidy 79%, but honestly, I believe this game deserves to be in the 90s. It's that good. For this entry, I'm going out of my comfort zone, and I'm going to be taking a look at a fighting game. I'm not a huge fan of fighting games so I decided to ask my good friend Scott if there were any underrated fighting games on the PlayStation and he pointed me in the direction of two titles. Two titles that not only had I never played, but two titles I'd never even heard of. I'm going to save one of them for a future video but today I'm going to talk about Poi Poi. Poi Poi is a 4 player action game where you aim to defeat your opponents using various props and across 6 environments. Each character has different strengths and weaknesses in terms of strength and speed. Players can also use special gloves that harness the psycho power which can unleash different abilities. Each environment also has hazards that you must avoid in order to maximise your chance to win the battle. However, in some cases, if you happen to have chosen the correct character with the correct abilities, you are able to use the environmental hazards against your opponents to gain an upper hand in combat. Again. Using game rankings, Poi Poi currently has a score of 74%, but as Scott says, It's one of the best games on the platform. Ridiculously unique, with tons of content and options because of how the glove system works. Great for multiplayer and smashing on your own. If you're a fan of fighting games, then take Scott's word for it and give it a go. However, it's not a cheap game right now, so only purchase if you feel as though you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> The penultimate game I'm going to talk about is Wild 9. Wild 9 was brought to us by the legends behind the excellent Earthworm Jim on the 16-bit machines, Shiny Entertainment and Interplay Productions. Just like Future Cop LAPD, this game was released in September of 1998. What a month that was. Wild 9 is a 2.5D platforming game which plays like a run and gun game. You take control of Wex Major... Wait, what? Wex Major? Wex Major, really, that's his name. Okay, you take control of Wex Major, what a stupid name, who gets lost in an unfamiliar galaxy where he eventually meets up with eight other strange adventurers. They all band together to create the Wild Nine with... 
Wex as their leader. The game takes place on a 2D plane but does occasionally allow you to move into the foreground or the background. Wex's main weapon is called the Rig. The Rig is an electrical beam coming from Wex's back and is used to obliterate your enemies and make them ever regret trying to engage in combat with the mighty Wex. Seriously, what a stupid name. The Rig attaches itself to your enemies and allows you to whip them around the level or thrash them to death. When it came to reviewing the game, certain critics were incredibly harsh in my opinion. GameSpot gave it 5.1 out of 10 and CNET Game Center gave it a ridiculous 4 out of 10, whereas IGN gave it an accurate 8.5 out of 10 and EGM gave it another favorable score of 7.75 out of 10. This really goes to show that the quality of a game really can be subjective. One thing that needs to be mentioned about Wild 9 is the absolutely outstanding soundtrack which was composed by the one and only Tommy Tallarico. It's one hell of a fantastic, well-produced soundtrack for sure. Overall, Wild 9 is a fun, enjoyable game that deserves your attention and is worthy of a playthrough. For my final entry into this video, I present to you Heart of Darkness. Heart of Darkness is a cinematic platformer which was developed by Amazing Studio and released in 1998. Damn, what a year 1998 was for the PlayStation. Well, the underrated games anyway, I couldn't tell you which other games came out in 1998 without research. In Heart of Darkness you assume the role of Andy as he attempts to rescue his beloved dog who has been kidnapped by shadow-like spectres. You progress through the game's linear storyline by making your way through various environments and solving various puzzles. One of the strongest memories I had from playing this game back in 2000 when I managed to pick it up from my local game shop was how many times you died. Andy can be killed very easily by the evil shadows, as well as being attacked by hungry wildlife and failing to traverse across perilous objects. During the playthrough, Andy is given access to additional abilities such as a plasma cannon which allows him to shoot lightning at the shadows which disintegrates them and allows safe passage onto the next part of the game. Now, Andy might die a lot but you do have unlimited continues and every time Andy dies you are conveniently placed at the most recent checkpoint. It may take you a while and a lot of trial and error but you will get through this title and you will feel amazing while doing it and when it's done. Various other versions of the game were planned. Versions for the 3DO, Amiga CD32 and Jaguar CD were announced but never saw the light of day. Probably because all three of those systems are shit. In 1996, Sega signed a deal for the console version of Heart of Darkness to be a Sega Saturn exclusive. But by the time the game was approaching completion and being ready for release, the Saturn was a dead system and releasing the game as an exclusive was no longer commercially viable. The reception for this game was pretty decent to be fair with it sitting on 75% on game rankings but for me this just doesn't cut it. It's another game that deserves much higher scores and like every other game on the list it deserves your time and attention. Well, thanks for watching this video. Do you know of any other PlayStation 1 games that are underrated? If so, smash them down in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for all future videos and as always, keep on gaming.